Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hit us at Hotline if you'd like to be part of the program, your opportunity to be a voice. Talk about the Secretary of State's race. There's nine people that qualified. One of them, they're trying to shove down our throat. The one I've been telling y'all about, the one that bet cannot be the Secretary of State, does not need to be the Secretary of State. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. And uh, there's, there's some candidates as Republicans and Democrats. And if you want to vote for a liberal woman, why vote for a liberal woman that's a Republican? Why not vote for a liberal wom- woman that's a Democrat? You know, if you, if you really want to vote, Republicans voting for liberals don't make any sense. Don't vote for somebody because of the color of their skin or their race or their gender. You vote for somebody because they can do the job and you can count on them. Let's go to Daryl in Monterey. How you doing, Daryl? Hey, good morning, Moon. Good morning, Glad sir. to have you back, and, and thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Great to be back. I'd like to make a comment on what you fixed to talk about. All right. Is, uh, I hope you stay on Julie Stokes. I am, boy, I am you doing a state a real favor. I just heard a interview, uh, whether on, uh, nine, on 970 KSYL, yeah. Yeah. the talk back show, uh-huh. and she didn't show me anything. Well, Julie, Julie, Stokes, Ju- Julie Stokes is, uh, is Nancy Pelosi in a Republican cult and a lot like Jay Darden. Julie Stokes she, is the one that the yeah, press sir. is shoving down our throats as the front runner. Julie Stokes is it. playing on this. Listen. That I am tickled to mm-hmm. death she beat breast cancer. I know a lot of women that beat breast cancer oh, that will never, too. that will never. I'm going to say I'm for, yes, sir, I'm for. I'm, I'm, but I'm saying there's a lot that. of people that okay. beat breast cancer will never get on the radio or TV, and they should be commended for their fight. Any kind of cancer, men with whatever kind of cancer, but she's using that, and that's the part I just don't understand because she's a true politician. Uses it everywhere she goes. We are happy for her. But don't use the emotional issue trying to get votes and get women votes. She's a liberal Republican. Now, if you want a liberal, there's Democrats that are running. She ought to change as a Democrat. I wouldn't have a problem with her. But she is a liberal. She's a big part of the Edwards team. She gave money to Bell Edwards when his campaign against David Vitter. She should be punished for it, not, not lifted up for it. So I'm just telling you who she is. And uh, she, she does not need to be in that position. She does not need to be in that position at all. And if she's put in that position, why any Republican that votes for her, you got to ask, why are you Republican? If you want a liberal, vote for a liberal Democrat. Liberal why? Republicans Wait. are destroying us. She worked high in it. Okay. She worked tight, tight with the Edwards administration and with the Darden and Edwards administration. She's a liberal. And matter well, of fact, if she wins, yeah. Democrats will be tickled to death if she wins. She was for Sanctuary City. She uh, uh, backed uh, Mitch Landrew down in uh, New Orleans. Oh, uh, no unbelievable. Me. The list that, goes on and on. Yeah, that don't surprise me at all if she did that. Because that, she's a liberal. She just wants to R by that so people can vote for us. I say... She's one of those uh, free lunch people. Okay. Yeah, who, who's going to pay for it? Me and you. Yeah. All right, got to run. Appreciate the call. Secretary of State's race. Uh, the big surprise was Republican Kyle Ondwan who is, by the way, the current interim Secretary of State, he's jumped in the race. Now, a lot of people upset saying because he said he wouldn't get in the race and he got into it in the last second. Uh, he's a Republican. Turkey Creek Mayor Heather Cloud, a Republican. Republican former Senate A.G. Crow, GOP Rep. Rick Edmonds, Democrat Renee fontenot Free. There's your Democrat woman right there, folks. She just got to come up with an issue that's, that can uh, do what Stokes is trying to do, which is basically use an issue and to play on people's emotions. I'm just being, and then of course, Julie Stokes, uh, who's a Republican, but I can't figure out why she's a Republican. I mean, come on, folks. If you're going to run, go run. That's fine. But the press has already picked her. Jim Bean picked her months ago. The advocates already picked her. The Gannett newspapers already picked her. Brandon, I showed you that when they mentioned about Secretary of State on the website. Who do they put? They put a picture of Julie Stokes. They're making it sound like she's some kind of great compromise and a conservative at the same time when she's not. She was for all the taxes. She didn't vote for a few of the taxes. Why? Because she knew it would hurt her. You remember the big sales tax vote they had? She walked in. She was there the whole time lobbying for one of the sales taxes. Walked in. It got beat. She walked out. There was one tax. She was the only one that didn't vote at all. 
That was because of political ways. This lady worked hand in hand with the Darden. She, listen, I know this for facts. She was always behind the scene with Jay Darden and always behind the scene with Bell, uh, Governor Edwards' people. This, this ain't, okay, I'm glad. I am tickled to death and happy for anybody that beats any kind of cancer, not just breast cancer, prostate cancer, any cancer. I'm tickled. To, I mean, that is an awesome experience because a lot of people don't make it. We ought to celebrate that. But that don't mean you get to win the office. That don't mean you're going to be a good person in office. This is a liberal. It's supposed to be a red state. Bell Edwards backed into the office. Everybody knows how he won. He won on the back some money from people like Julie Stokes who donated to Bell Edwards. This lady donated to Bell Edwards to be governor. She's a Republican. Why is she a Republican if she's supporting the leftist Democrat, Bill Edwards? And she supported him every single session. How many we had? Ten. She supported him every time. She worked with them. She was a floor leader on getting votes for Bill Edwards through Republicans. Why in the hell do we have Republicans then? Now I know Republicans for Edwards. This is no friend of, of the conservative movement in this state. We're supposed to be a red state. Nobody knows this woman. You know what the press keeps telling us? Front runner. Front runner. How is she a front runner? The only poll I've seen had a 6% or 4%. She's not a front runner. The press. Folks, this is the same Washington press that's moved down here. They pick in the person they want. They'll never challenge her. They'll always lift her up. Give me an example. Grace notes. Stephanie Grace. A Landrew Sycophant. For one Secretary of State candidate making the races a victory in itself. And what do they do? Stephanie Grace, who doesn't have a clue about Louisiana politics or anything else, does the story on old Julie Stokes. Okay. And it and, and tells the story. Okay. But there are better Republicans, I promise you. And if you want a liberal woman, the free lady. That's running. Renee Fontenot Free is a liberal Democrat. So if you really want a liberal, why don't you get one? At least a liberal Democrat is stepping up saying, I'm a liberal Democrat. Julie Stokes is trying to tell you she's some kind of conservative working to fix stuff. She runs with the left group. And I'm telling you, Democrats, Edwards and Dorton would be tickled to death to have her as secretary of state. Why would they be happy to have such a Republican when we got two or three Republicans in here that really are good Republicans? Stokes, I cannot believe any Republican would pull that lever. And you don't vote for somebody because they're a woman, white or black. You vote for them because it's the right person. 844-766-6607, Hickson has it hotline. You know, folks, I, tr I, I just try to be real honest about the candidates. Uh, I've seen people that I support that I have to challenge. Because of what they did. When I tell you about a candidate like Nancy Pelosi Stokes, I've been watching her for three years. I've been watching her operate with the Edwards administration. If you like Bell Edwards and you love Bell Edwards, vote for Stokes. That's perfect. Fits perfect. If you sit here and say, well, you know, I, we need, the, the, you don't vote for somebody because they had breast cancer. You don't vote for somebody because it's a woman, white, black, Male, female, Cajun, Jew. You don't vote for them for that reason. you got to really take a, take a look. And what I'm concerned about, and I'll be blind, and maybe I'll get a call from somebody that's involved in the Republican Party, especially Republican women, you know, that would like to see a woman be elected in this position. I'd be fine with me. But the woman that you want to elect is no different than voting for the Democrat woman. There's no difference except a DNR. She's going to go around and talk to y'all about all this stuff. And you don't, I'm telling you, you don't vote for people like that. I look at the record. When you got a record, and she has a record, and the record is 100% trying to raise every tax known to mankind. I don't care if she voted for it or not. She would be all for it. If it was going to pass, she wouldn't have to vote for it. She was a floor leader and is a floor leader in the 10 sessions for Bell Edwards and Jay Dorn. You go ask people down there who met with the Edwards people many, many times behind closed doors. Julie Stokes. You watch the money she raised. A lot of it's going to come from the left. She gave money to Bell Edwards. 
against Vitter. It's, it's a fact. Why is she in the Republican Party? If Julie Stokes would go to the thing, register as a Democrat, and she can win, I'm all for. She could not win as a Democrat, yet that's what her allegiance is to. These weak Republicans, these no conservative Republicans, people like this, Rob Shadwell, you know, Mark Motax is Abraham. I mean, you got these people that constantly vote the wrong way and vote against the people. And then they tell you they're voting for the people. It's frustrating to watch this. Secretary of State, there's some good candidates out there. I'm not telling you who to vote for. If we're going to put a leftist in there, at least let's know the leftists before they go in. And, I, I, you know, she's playing on top of this tragedy she had, and I think we ought to be thankful she made it through. I hope she never has to face that again. I hope she has a long life, but not as Secretary of State. And they plan on this, and the press is planning on this. Jim Bean's been planning on this for years. So is the advocate. So is the Times Speaker Union. So is the Greg Hilbert and the Gannett newspapers. So is Stephanie Grace. Jeremy Alford. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Jeremy Alford. You know, uh, the weekly uh, political facts. They used to call it political facts, but it's, they do this on a weekly deal. I'm a, I, I, I subscribe. I pay for it. He did it, too. And that's what I'm saying about people in the press. This is what they do. This is what they're going to continue to do. They're going to write stories just like Stephanie Grace did. And they're going to play on your emotions. And I just think that's not the right way to, to pick somebody. And it's not the right way to pick somebody. You know? And But yet, I know how people vote. We just don't. We, I'm saying me too. Not pointing my finger at anybody. I'm saying me too. Sometimes we just we just don't vote right. I, I don't understand not really looking at these candidates. We're looking at a little turnout election. We're not looking at no big election, although we have congressional races all over the state. We got congressional races all over the state of Louisiana. I just don't know what the turnout's gonna be. People start believing. And they will start believing that. They really start believing that people like this, because they have this story, they start shoving them down our face. Now, let me see real quick. Uh, okay, here it is. They all saying she's the front runner, and she's not. One of the reasons odd makers like Stokes is because she's a woman who can talk about women's issue in any environment. Let me ask this a question. The woman's issues. What's a woman's issues in the Secretary of State's office? Tell me what it is, Brandon. Secretary of State, they oversee the election. That's for men and women. Black, white, green, and yellow. But there's no woman's issues in the Secretary of State's office. You now, know, Tom Shedler did some things. Okay. Okay, did some things. I thought well, Bell Edwards hadn't done that. Bobby Jindal didn't do that. Hey, Jim Brown, when he was there, he never found he did anything with a woman. <clears throat> but they're going to use the issue to replace Shedder, so we're going to put a woman there. You see what I'm saying? Another emotional issue. Another issue that's a very emotional issue with people. So we're going to elect this, this woman who, by the way, is a leftist in a position and see what they do and they point all this out. There are four women running in the office. And I just told you, if you want a liberal woman, vote for the Democrat. Okay? Don't vote for the Republican liberal woman. That's the worst thing we can do. That's why all these Republicans that vote for all these taxes, all of them need to be beat. They, listen, serving is a either f further confirmation of how right this contest in, is for gender politics, a proof that more women are taking an interest in politics. Given that men still outnumber women nearly three to one as candidates in these races, the most likely explanation could be the former. So they're trying to play this. Listen, I remember, Brandon, you probably remember this. You're a sports guy. I remember when Peyton Manning was a senior, mm. best player in the country. 
They started with, we've always did quarterbacks, and they started with, was it Woodson that won it that year? Who won the Heisman Trophy? Guy from Michigan. Oh, yeah. Woodson, right? Woodson, yes. Yeah, you know what they did? Charles Woodson. They made a big deal that he was a multiple player, and did, and by the way, great play, great pro player. They took that thing from Peyton Manning. He was the best player in the country. But what they did was they started a campaign early, and everybody bit into the fact that, well, you know, we always put a quarterback. We always put a quarterback. We always put a running back. We always put a quarterback. And that was the year they finally, this is what they're doing with this. Well, we need a woman in that position. You know, a man hammed it up. I don't care if you vote for a woman. I really don't. Vote for the Democrat. If you want a liberal, vote for the Democrat. Because if you vote for a Republican liberal, that's the worst kind of liberal is a Republican liberal. They're, they're not going to tell you the truth. They're never going to be honest with you, and they're going to knife you in the back. I'm tired of that. <laughs> just tired of it. You may not be, but I am. So anyway, we got choices as nine. I, I, I'm, I'm narrowing my mind down to a few. They're going to play this issue. And I got a feeling some women are going to bite into it. I hope not. Let's go to phone lines. Charlie in Lafayette. Charlie, how you doing? Good morning, and welcome back. Yes, sir. Glad to be back. And listen, I uh, this Secretary of State's race, first of all, it is so vital, not only in Louisiana around the state, because the Secretaries of State and election officials is where the real progressives, the sources, are starting to put their money because they know if they can control our election process, um, you know, we're going to move farther and farther to the, to the left. But in Louisiana right now with the Secretary of State race, if we had closed primaries, uh, I think this is the uh, this is the perfect example of why we need closed primaries, because we're going to find out who the true Republican is when we get through the closed primaries. Yeah. Um, Julie Stokes could run as a Republican in the Republican primary, but she would be running as the most liberal of any of the Republicans. Chances are she would not win a Republican closed primary. No, she wouldn't even get close. Uh, she yeah. wouldn't even get close. Right. So now, now let me give you the flip the side of that, Charlie. Way. By the way, by the way, I agree with you. And when you when you suggested that, I thought, wow, that's true. This is closed primary. It'd be great because she'd have to decide to be a Democrat because she couldn't win in a Republican primary. Open primary, she has a chance. The only thing about it, and I get a little nervous, and it's one thing, and I saw it with David Vitter, uh, and it was open primary, though. Uh, if you beat yourselves up and you have Republicans like Jay Darden did, and Angel and Darden and, and, and people like Stokes have been stabbing, the, they've been stabbing the Republicans left and right as we watch the budget process. Uh, that's what worries me. Then you get in a regular race and yeah. you got all these Republicans that get so mad about what happened that they don't vote or they vote for the left. That That's a problem. Well, it, well, it actually, but it happened in the open primary. It and did, it happened it did. for a couple of races. Uh, here's the thing. In that, remember, we had the uh, primary election roughly 30 days before the general election. So it, in our view, the state party, who has, the, the state Republican Party has voted to uh, endorse a closed primary system, but the view of it is the way most states would do it. The closed primary uh, would be uh, four to six months in advance of the right. general election. Good point. So there would be a closed primary. Uh, if there is a runoff, uh, there may or may not be, depending on the rules, there could be a threshold, even with a plurality winner at a certain threshold, threshold maybe 40% or something like that. But even if there was a close uh, a party runoff, it would still be four to five months ahead of the general election. Then we've got time sure. to bring people back together. Sure. And uh, remember, it's, it's Republicans then deciding who, and it's the Democrats deciding who their their nominee would be. Now, another objection that you hear from people is that well, it guarantees there will be a Democrat uh, in the general election. Well, you know what? I think we have a Democrat in most of them anyway. Unfortunately, some of them have ours behind their names. Yeah, no so doubt. No this doubt. way we have a true Republican and a true Democrat. And look, I believe Democrats should have their own uh, candidate as well. Let them decide if they want a, a liberal Democrat, a moderate Democrat, whatever they want to do. But they're running as a true Democrat, and then we have a, a Republican running as a true Republican. I believe once we do that, 
uh, I think, in my opinion, the Republican Party will continue to grow because I believe that's the philosophy of the most most of the people in the state. But this election, this state, this Secretary of State's election, it is it so matters. vitally important. It but matters. it's also the example as to why we need close primaries. Yeah, and, and I, I, I can't argue with that. But this this does matter. And when I see the press, the same ones that got behind Edwards, the same ones that wrote all the puff pieces about him, continue to do. They've been writing puff pieces about Julie Stokes since a year or so ago. They wanted her to run for treasurer. They want her a statewide elected person because they know she, she, by the way, gave money to Bill Edwards in his election. She's already shown her color. So if she's done that, why does she want to run on a Republican label? Why don't she just run as a Democrat? Run as who you are. Right, and let's let's go back to the concept of the of the of the uh, uh, party primaries. You know, uh, let's take her name out of it specifically. If a person wants to run in, let's say, a Republican primary, and they're they're saying, "Look, I am a moderate or a liberal," let Republicans decide that, not the Democrats decide who who the Republican so called candidate would be. Well, so it, it it really gives each party the opportunity to demonstrate what they believe and what they stand for and not muddy the issue as, well, wait a minute, do you believe for the, these principles or do you believe the principles of the other party? And so, I'm, again, I'm taking just her name out of it. I'm just simply saying from a concept standpoint, uh, I believe from a Republican side we will have more real Republicans who believe in the real doctrine of the Republican Party of smaller government, pro-life, uh, lower taxes, you know, the strong independence and freedom, the Democrats may feel opposite, and that's fine. They have every right to do so. But it lets people know, okay, here's the candidate, here's what they stand for, and then Republicans can hold them accountable. Right now, you know, a person gets elected, well, uh, you know, it's the Democrats can hold them accountable, but the Republicans and the Democrats can hold their own candidates accountable well, for how they vote and who they are. Yeah. All right, Charlie, appreciate the call. The one of the points that he made that's a good point. If you had a closed primary, we can say, okay, let's see what A. G. Crow did when he ran, ran it. Let's see what Ornduan did. Who, by the way, there's there's, some, there's a little bit on that too. I'll get to that. And then Edmonds. Let's see what he voted. Let's see. Let's see how Julie Stokes voted. What she did. And I didn't nickname her Nancy Pelosi for nothing. She is the Nancy Pelosi of the Republican Party. Then Nancy Pelosi and, and Julie Stokes, they, they believe a lot of the same things. So you'd put all their voting records on what they've done, who you donated money to, who you gave money to. She would be eliminated immediately, immediately on the Republican side. But she has Bell Edwards and them supporting her and getting her money. And that's what's going on in this race. All right, 844-766-6607, Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, your thought, should we go back to closed primaries and get this over with for once and all, for all? All right, we'll take a break. We'll visit with uh, Chris Rader of uh, Rader Solutions, talk a little bit about an IT guy. You want an IT guy, you're getting ready to meet him. We'll be right back. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moving to Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607, Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, let's jump gears. We're going to talk a little bit of business. We love promoting businesses, great Louisiana businesses. i got another one here. My friend Chris Rader joins us, Rader Solutions. Chris, how you doing, bud? Good, Moon. How you doing today? I am doing superb. I wish, I was telling this to Brandon, I wish that everybody that needed IT guys like y'all, and and everybody does really, <laughs> but I wish they could go through and walk through your place and just look at the operation that y'all got running. They would be so impressed, and they would jump on the bandwagon. I just wanted to give y'all a shout-out because I was able to come through. You you walked me through, and it was really impressive what you guys are trying to do. Well, thank you very much for the compliment. We've been working on it for 20 years now, as you know, and uh, things have changed quite a bit in the last 20 years, and we started early on in the IT business, and today um, – we feel like we've got our arms around it, if you can imagine that. So yeah. it's, um, it, but, but yeah, thank you for the compliment. But y'all do, you do business outside the state, a lot of it, but y'all do business yeah. inside the state. Let's talk about what y'all can do for companies in this state of Louisiana and some outside areas, because we do reach some other areas, and the type company and what exactly y'all do and, and what people listening to today who may say, hey, I've been needing these people for a long time. Talk a little bit about it. 
Right. So we're the IT department for small companies. We usually have uh, anywhere between 10 to maybe a couple hundred, uh, 500 employees, uh, small businesses. And what that means, Moon, is we host servers for them. We manage their networks when their employees have a trouble trouble receiving an email, sending an email, accessing a server, a speed issue, connectivity, uh, talking on their phone to another location or to a client, or just have a general question about how to do something with a spreadsheet. They call into our office, we know them, and we help them right away. And we answer that phone 98% of the time. But the main thing is we're keeping them secure also. And we start early in the morning. We, uh, we run 24 hours. Uh, we're on call 24 hours. But we start about 5.30 in the morning um, to take care of these people. And we're, we're staffed up by 6 because most of the problems happen during the night. Um, but these people depend on us to manage their IT so they can manage their business. So in other words, Chris Rader, my special uh, uh, guest today, Raider Solutions. You've heard him on his program many a time, advertisers. We love talking Louisiana business. This is a homegrown Louisiana business. So, Chris, I guess you deal with all type companies, and I just want you to throw some out there. I mean, do you deal with medical, people that have warehouses? Right. Name some of the companies without naming the names that you actually work with and deal with. Yeah, we work with uh, medical companies, um, engineering firms, uh, landman companies, energy companies, uh, manufacturing companies, mm-hmm. lumber companies, uh, millwork companies. Um, the list goes on and on. Government. We have some government uh, uh, entities that we work with and some city um, entities. But at the end of the day, we they come to us and say, look, we're tired of dealing with two or three or four different IT people. Uh, we just want to deal with one company that understands everything that we're doing. And then that's who we are. And we have we have 25 employees, Moon, to give you an idea of our size. Those are full-time employees. We don't outsource any of this stuff. And uh, we make commitments to these companies, and they make commitments to us, and then we manage our IT. Yeah. But it, it, it's a very diverse group of, of companies. They're not um, they're not all the same. Well, that, the reason I wanted to bring it up is to let people know somebody's going, to, yeah, but they do with this company. Well, the best way to do is to get in touch with y'all, go to a website, uh, get in right. touch with y'all, and you guys can service. As a matter of fact, you made the comment to me. When I was walking through, I know you had about 25 employees, but you felt like with the, the, the rate of the growth that y'all having in the companies, and especially with working with more Louisiana companies, you probably will double that. That you, you, you're expanding, yeah. and your expansion is because you're helping companies get their business straight. Right. Basically, IT has become a burden for a number of these companies just because uh, they don't have the expertise to manage it. Sure. And we do. So once we take that burden off of them, they can grow, and as they grow, we grow. So if they're successful, we're successful, sure. and that's the way we think about it. We're not we're not all things to all people. Um, we to give you an idea, we just have 150 companies in Louisiana, so mm-hmm. it's not any more than that. Mm-hmm. So and I want and I want people to know you're not you're not the guy that somebody says I have a computer problem, come fix my computer. That's not who you are. You're talking about doing the whole IT program for them. Yeah, we well, manage the whole IT. If we're manage, yeah, that's a very good point, Moon. If we're managing IT and you have a problem with your computer. We're going to fix it or we're going to replace it right now. That's not an issue. Yeah. But we don't, we don't go, someone can't just call us and say, hey, we're using this IT company or we have someone on staff and would you just send someone over to fix our server? Sure. That's not who we are. We're not a firefighter. No. We're preventing those fires. But we have to manage the whole infrastructure to do that. And that's, if people like that. Actually, you're becoming, you're becoming, you become part of the business, the part that they don't want to deal with, the part they don't have to worry about because one of the things I know you mentioned, when when I when I went through and, and visited with you, mm-hmm. was you talked a lot about security, and I think that that a lot of people say, well, if I if I, if I go to Chris and Chris does all this for me, but I don't know, people are not going to be able to get involved in this or get in this, and security is one of the biggest things y'all do for a lot of companies. That's right. Security is the thing that everybody is concerned with. I mean, if you just read the headlines about all the hacking of all the Fortune 500 companies in the last mm-hmm. few years, from Equifax to to Yahoo email and the list goes on. Um, the, the bottom line is you can't just put a computer on a desk, ask, access servers, or think that you're secure. You have to you have to review it every day. You can't just put a server in a building and walk away. It's a 24 hour thing. We have programs that we run. We have people that are looking at reports. We get alerts. We have blockings. We have intelligent systems blocking things. Um, it's it's a whole ecosystem, if you will. Sure. And um, you know, you can't just install a server and walk away anymore. That that's that's a you know, that's that's nineteen nineteen eighty, I guess, or nineteen ninety sure. we'll call sure. it. Sure. 
No, but that's but when I, once again, you really impressed me with security. You got a lot. One of the things I liked about your company too, you're a company that's growing. You got a lot of young people working. A lot of people that understand right. what's going on with the computers and the IT deal. And I thought that was pretty neat, too. I met a lot of young people at your company. And that's kind of neat. I'm sure, I'm sure for you, it's kind of neat to hang around with a lot of young people because they keep you popping. <laughs> it makes me feel younger. I don't know if you remember, we call it a very healthy environment. Yeah, you did. No, no, you, you, you know, the, you did that. People told me when I had a baby late in my life, oh, it's going to keep you young. And I thought, I'll kill you. And in your case, they keep you young. But, uh, hey, you got a lot of bright minds there. You hire some really fine people. And uh, it was great Absolutely. meeting those people. So I know the type of people you're hiring to make sure when you, when you work with a company, and that's what you're doing, you become part of a working environment for that company, the IT part, they don't have to worry about. They got a question, they pick up right. a call, email, whatever, and your people answer and respond immediately. Yeah, we, we have relationships with all these companies. They think we're in the office right next door to them because we answer the phone right away and we know their name and we talk to them like they're humans, and that's important too. That's no doubt a comment. But once again, tell people, uh, Chris, what's the best ways to get in touch with you if you're a company out there, a small company, meat size, whatever, and you're looking yeah. for somebody to come take this over and be a partner with you? That's kind of how I look at your business. You kind of right. partner with these people. How can people get in touch with you guys? People can call us at this number, which is our main number, 337-205-4652, and I'll repeat that, area code 337-205-4652. And we'll be more than more than happy to talk to them, have a confidential conversation about where they are with IT now, and uh, what what problems they're experiencing, and how we can we can help them on a go forward basis, so that their business can grow and expand, and they can become more profitable, and we we take this burden off of them. Or they can go to our website, which is always good for information: www.rader, and that's r a d e r solutions dot com. So www.rader solutions dot com. And Chris been doing this for 20 years, folks, and they, uh, your technology is all up to date. I thought that was pretty neat, too. Everything is updated all the time, and, and you guys right. on the ball. Well, well, thank you very much, Moon. Um, I can keep going if you'd like. I've got a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you can, but I, what I want people to do is to call you, trust you, right. and get in touch with you. I think that's an important thing. Uh, I don't know how much I can help you, but I'm trying to. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you visiting with me. Um, it means a lot to us. All right, Chris, we'll do it again very soon. All right, thanks, man. We'll All see right. you soon. Yes, sir, Chris Rader, Raiders uh, Solutions. Folks, these people know what they're doing. If you got an IT problem, don't, don't, don't deal with that anymore. Get this guy right here and his company to help you, and I promise you, you won't have to worry about that anymore, and it'll be all secure. Thank you listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We'll take a break. Be right back.